Okay, a lot of you know I rented a booth, and the lady that I'm renting it from, I showed her a video of the chandelier in my shop. I'll put a link to that. And so, she, after she saw the video, she wanted me to make a chandelier for the main room you walk into uh, at her business. And so, I'm getting ready to paint this, and she wants it white and distressed. And I was fixing, let's see, ignore the mess, I've been so busy. Uh, I was fixing to drill holes in this, because, you know, the electrical thing come out of here. But she don't want any electricity to it. So, uh, I was going to drill holes in this to hang crystals on, and then I saw these out my building. And I'm thinking, I thought about gluing them to it, and I'm like, well, I got those bits that you can cut glass with. So I'm thinking about cutting a hole in these and putting them there. And it'd be pretty low, so people would probably see the top, I don't know. But, you know, she can set battery-powered lights on it. Well, she could on a metal piece, too. So this is what it would look like from the bottom. Oh, goodness, you can't see it. And Well, except it'd be paint. That would be painted white. And uh, I'm going to use this, I think, to get my hole going. I've never cut glass, so... <laughs> We're going to see. So, let's go out to the shop or the back. Well, the shop. People are in bed. Okay, I'm outside now on my old screen door I've been working on. And I decided to wait till tomorrow because since i got to use water with that drill bit in the glass, I want to do it outside where I don't get mildew or mold in my shop. But I want to show you how this thing goes together. Let me see if I can do it with one hand. <laughs> Okay, so this little piece goes under that one, so from the bottom it would look like that. Okay, and then they both go up here, but where is that piece? This little thing, it's just a threaded like lamp part kind of thing. It's on there. Well, then that would go on there, and that would go on there, and a lock washer, and then this. That's the electrical thing. I just whacked it off because she don't care nothing about that. And so, uh, there's my stuff I'm ready to take out. That I'm going to try to keep my drill bit from slipping with it. And this, I'm going to set it on it to drill it and that way it'll keep me from drilling into whatever surface I'm working on. I had ordered these drill bits and I'm gonna put a link uh, to a video a guy made it's awesome about cutting holes in glass but finish watching mine before you go watch his <laughs> and uh, I think I got these from the link he provided tack life blah 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 diamond drill bit and they were about where's it say that oh and they were about ten dollars or something but i got all, this is the one i need and look at this i got the lot what do you call these little cup saws and okay what i'm measuring is this threaded piece against the drill bits and I can tell. I can just tell. I can't get it to show up. This is actually just a hair larger, which is fine. And, uh, where's that metal piece at? See, that's bigger than, uh, this piece, too. So that'll, that'll be just fine. So that's the one I'm going to use. Because the next step is too big. And the one before that is way too small. So, maybe tomorrow we'll get started on this. <laughs> and I hope they don't shatter. <laughs> Keep your fingers crossed. Okay, I was practicing before I actually did it on video. And I got a hole in it. But, let's see if I can focus. 
You see where I start out in the wrong spot? <laughs> I'll use this one if I have to. I had one or two extra of these. So, uh, and it's still a tad off center, but we'll see. If it don't work, it don't work. Uh, I got to figure out a better way though, because I made a pattern out of cardboard and taped to it, um, where my hole should be. You know, put a hole in the cardboard, but you know, you got to keep water on it. <laughs> so that didn't work, and I guess that's why I got crooked. Cardboard hole wallered out. So, I'm going to try to figure out a way to make a little pattern thing and keep in place, and then I'll be back. Oh, and it takes forever. So if you try it, um, just it takes a while, don't press down. Um, and also, when you're doing it, because I might be talking during the next, I mean, uh, doing it during the next and so I might not be able to talk. Or you might not be able to hear me if I did. But kind of, you know, go back and forth a little bit. But don't press down. They say it will definitely break if you put, you know, pressure on it. The, the drill weighs enough that you ain't got to worry about trying to put pressure on it anyway. And wear eye protection and uh, a good, very good fitting mask or a respirator. Even though the water keeps dust down. And then I probably should have put something down to protect the porch. Because, you know, it's a teeny, weeny, weeny little... It ain't slivers, but it's uh, glass nonetheless. But let me see what I can figure out. Oh, and my milk jug. <laughs> uh, let me see. I took this corn skewer. And see how it's got one long one? Because I needed a teeny tiny hole. And that's the only teeny tiny thing I could find at the moment. And so I poked a teeny tiny hole right in here. I got it sitting on a, something else. Uh, and when it was full of water, I could loosen the lid and the water would come out in a little stream. But uh, when it quit coming out, I didn't want to go fill it back up. So I would just reach over with the other hand that I wouldn't hold drill with. Let's see if I can catch this. No. And I'd press it. I didn't have to press it that hard because I had more in it. But I'll try to remember to show you that with it full. Okay. I got some cardboard here. And when I loosen the lid, it should start peeing. Because <laughs> I put, you know, I filled it up pretty good. Where's the hole at? There we go. And then I tighten the lid back up. I can't over tighten it because then I can't open it with one hand. Now it's dying down a little bit. Now I'm going to open it a little more. And there we go again. Maybe you can see it if I put that behind it. And close it. It takes a while to quit peeing. <laughs> That's what I call it. But that uh, gives you a little stream of water where you don't have to have somebody stand there putting water on it for you. And the guy in the video, he used a two liter bottle. It'd be taller, I guess. But either one will work. Okay, I got on my mask and my goggles, which may have to go. They're fogging up. Uh, I'm going to talk loud during parts of this because uh, I'll have to cut the volume down on the program if I can. I don't know why my jug keeps peeing. I got the lid tightened. But anyway, <laughs> I cut a hole in a piece of wood. Not in the center for some reason. Let me move this. I'm going to try... Uh, let's see. I put some nail polish right there in the center. Hopefully it'll help me find the center if it don't wash off. <sighs> yep, I can see it. So let's try this. No pressure. Wait, let me take his glasses off. Okay. 
it takes a while but you can't get in a hurry and apply pressure and the water is to keep it cool because that, your glass will break if it gets too hot and your bit will get wore out We'll see what we got. I forgot my glove. So if it breaks, I'll be in trouble. Oh, where you at? Oh yeah, we got it going in there. Where's, oh, there's my mitten. <laughs> well, I probably don't need that now. And I think some people use uh, drill bits. This is like a little, it's a hole. And I'm wondering if drill bits are quicker. I don't know. Well, that guy, his goes pretty quick. I don't know. And of course my phone's ringing. We'll ignore it. How long is it going to take? That's only the second one I've done with it, so it shouldn't be dull. But you can tell I got pretty centered. I'm off a tad, but that nail polish really come in handy. It's pretty deep. Maybe it won't be long. Success! Whew! That took long enough, didn't it? Can you see it? Wait a minute. Oh, okay, Joe, quit peeing. Now you can see it. Looks a lot better than my first try where I had it off center and had to start over. Now I got four more to go because uh, it's got, what, five arms? I've done two. It's got five arms and I'm wanting one to put it at the very top too, I think. So, I'll be at this a while. <laughs> anyway, I hope this was helpful and y'all check out the links if I don't forget to put them. If I do, y'all remind me. Okay, I'm going to work this in. I guess you definitely need gloves. That's the hand that I was holding the plate with with no glove on that was close to the action. And see, now that in the middle right there, that looks like a little bit of a cut. And see, I've been spray painting today, today too, so I don't know. I just ain't really messed with it yet. But, oh, and I was going to say that is another good reason to wear a mask because if if that was little tiny pieces of glass hitting my hand, then you don't want to breathe it. So, uh, so yeah. <laughs> wear a mask and wear gloves for sure. And a protective glove to keep your hand from getting cut if, uh, you know, it shatters or something. So, it could be paint. 
Although that don't look like paint. And that's definitely not. But all the others could be, but I don't know. But anyway, had to work this in. Okay, for cleanup, I uh, put some uh, paper towels down in there, soak up that water. And I'm going to just gather the bag up and then put it in the garbage can because there's probably a lot of little bits of glass down in there. So I don't want to dump it out. And then I'm going to rinse the porch off. And then maybe I'll show you how one of them looks on the chandelier. Well, maybe later I will. Okay, here it is so far. I forgot to show the brown phase. I sprayed it with brown primer, the matte brown. And uh, when I went to put the clear glaze over it, it puckered like that on the bottom. And I think that happened with my pink one. And I don't know how, if I like sanded it off, it's been a while. Or if it's still on it, I don't think it is. I don't remember what I did. And uh, so I don't know if it's some chemical reaction or what. So instead of using my spray paint, my spray chalk paint that I bought for this, where it would be have a nice smooth finish, <laughs> I'm using this. So it'll be a little more old and decrepit looking than I'd planned for it to be. But she wanted it to look old. And I guess I need to go with my style, you know. So, uh, but you know, the one I showed her wasn't that way. It was smooth looking. But either way. And uh, if she don't like it, I'll put it in my booth and do her another one. <laughs> I think she'll like it though. And so now I'm going to try to make some crackle on it. And, and I'm doing this. This ivory is the darkest uh, in the white family, I guess, that I got. And so then I'm going to use two more whites. She don't want it white, white. Because I asked her, you want creamy white or white, white? And she said creamy white. So I'm going to go, I'm going to have this ivory over most of it, especially in the deeper spots. And then I'll use some of the plaster color that I use a lot. You know, I'll brush some of it on in major areas, but not in the deep areas. And then the white, white, I'll just kind of highlight some areas. And then I'll go back and, uh, you know, with a wet rag or something, you know, have this Waverly, it don't distress easy. <laughs> Hopefully I won't have to resort to sandpaper. It's blurry, ain't it? But, uh, then I'll distress some of the high points. And uh, I put the, the matte clear finish on there to hopefully prevent me from going to the, the brass color. I don't want to do that. If I do, it'll just be another hassle I have to deal with. But uh, that's where I'm at so far. This is the first coat. And so I'll have to put at least one more of this color. And then, you know, go over it with the other colors too. So that's where I'm at so far. Okay, I got some crackle. I took a little brush and painted wood glue in all these cracks and a little bit down in some places. So this is the second coat of that ivory. And then I used the blow dryer on the cool set and I got a lot of brush marks, but with a wet towel, I can get a lot of them out. And let's see, right here's an area. And you know, I think you can mix the paint with the glue. I use, I don't know if I said I use wood glue. And so, since I'm going this route, I'm just going to make it. You know, I told her, I said, so I can make it old and grungy and like peeling paint. And she said, yeah, so that's, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and so, I hadn't put any second coat up here yet. I just painted some glue there and immediately just, uh, so you can't really see any right there. Just a bunch of brush strokes. So I may uh, mix some paint with the glue and see how it does. I'll do that and I'll be right back. Okay, maybe we can do this in real time. I just got through painting. Let's see. This wood glue. And the cracks again right there. And so now I'm taking my ivory paint. I need a little brush really, but that's what I'm using. I'm 
I'm gonna blow my paint on pretty thick. It's hard to do one-handed. <laughs> It'd focus it help wouldn't it okay paint it on there and it's kind of mixing in I was gonna mix the glue with the paint but uh, I was afraid it'd change the paint the color of the paint too much so let me smooth that out best I can and I would add water at this point, but with all these curves and stuff, I did that earlier and I kept having bad runs. Okay, where's my blow dryer? And like, right there, I'm just gonna... Well, there's a piece I can smush back in it. I'm gonna get these... I'm gonna try to wipe some of these brush marks with my finger. And leave that little wad on there. I could probably wet my finger. But see when I'm smearing it, it's doing weird. I guess I better quit or wet my finger. But that kind of just adds to the old. Let's blow dry it. And I'm going to use cool setting where the metal don't get too hot. See if I can get it to focus on it good. I lied. I alternated uh, hot and then I'd hit that cool down button. So, I don't know what this is trying to focus on. But you can kind of see how grungy it's looking. And that, it'll probably... Uh, crackle a little more but that's what I got so far and it's starting to crackle there pretty good too and that little wad may be too whitey I'll rake it off but right here is where I smeared let's see if I can block whatever it's trying to focus on and that looks pretty good where I tried to smear it hmm all right, I'm going to do it to the rest of it, and then I'll be back to show you after I get all the ivory done, then I'll move on to the next color. Okay, here it is with the ivory all over it, and uh, you think I'll ever get a halfway smooth looking? <laughs> I ain't going gonna, gonna to sand all that. I might get a wet rag and go over it a good bit, and I should get some of it. But uh, now I've got the uh, plaster color, and I'm going to... Uh, just have a little on it and I'm I'm not getting toward the cracks because I want that slightly darker color there and I don't know how my brush got so wet so I'm gonna paint the plaster color and then I'll I'll show you when I go back over just a little bit with the white white all right I've got the uh ivory on there then I put the plaster over most of it and now I poured some of the it well it ain't called white white I keep calling it that because it's so white it's that one it's just called white and so I just got a little bit on the brush let's see where else focus I'm just gonna pick some random spots but when I go over it with a rag these may go away I don't know I didn't practice enough all this time. <laughs> Let's see, like right here. Just a little bit. And I don't want to put it on all high places. You know, maybe some. Because that's where I'll be doing some distressing. So I'd probably distress all that off. Just a little spot here and there. And that's what I'll be doing. Okay, I wet it pretty good and I'm letting it sit on there. It's been sitting on there a few minutes. And I'm just mainly trying to smooth it out right now, not uh, distress it. 
Let's see. But can you see it's getting smoother looking? So when it gets all rough looking, don't totally panic. Now it's going to be pretty rough looking. But uh, it's getting some of the brush strokes out. And getting like, see that little crumb hanging right there? It'll get those kind of things. So I'll be doing this. Okay, if you'll stay focused. Let's see if the shadow helps. You see all those lines? I think what I like doing... So I'm going to wet it. And then, the lines kind of are less obvious anyway when it's wet. And then I'm taking my sandpaper while it's wet. It ain't real wet like the other one was. My rag had dried out a little bit. Let me see if I can squeeze some out. But I won't be concerned with doing every little inch because that would just be too much. But where, oh, I'm already distressing right there. I better lighten my pressure. But where um, there's obvious uh, brush strokes that are just too crazy, I'll do this. And it gets it pretty smooth looking. Let's see. If it'll focus. There we go. And that's getting it smoother looking. And so there's the the ball I did. I'm gonna have to add some more paint. I believe it got thin in areas. Not from the sand and it was doing that when I was wiping, but uh that's all that crinkling it did when I sprayed that clear stuff. But you can tell it's smoother looking. And on around here. See? Back there it's not. And right here it is. So. I'm gonna keep at it. Okay. So I've got it distressed in spots. And I hope to never paint another one fully with the chalk paint because it was so hard to try to get the brush strokes out which i don't mind a few because i'm wanting it to look old but you know how ridiculous it can get and i tried using water and it would thin it and it would run and it would have left a drip so i gave up on that idea and i used the rag in certain places but in other places it was too hard to so i had to resort to rough sponges and some i think it was 320 grit sandpaper but that sandpaper boy it took it down once I got past the chalk paint and I could see a little of the brown for long boom it was to the brass so uh, had I used chalk paint to do the brown layer you know the brown layer would have been a little thicker I used that spray paint because I was planning on just spray paint the whole thing <laughs> so either next time I would use um, this and a paint sprayer if possible i know uh jamie ray vintage uh and zeb they put it in a paint sprayer a certain type but their paint's different this may be way thicker and not work um or spray paint it maybe put the uh i don't know because to distress it i might would fake distress because that was really time consuming you know, just paint on little distress marks. That might be what I would do next time. Use a, a, you know, a chalk spray in a can and fake distress. I don't know. Because <clears throat> if I put on a base layer of chalk paint, you know, I'd have the same problem with brush strokes showing up bad and all. You know, and blobbiness and all that good stuff. I wanted the crusty look, but I mean, it was like a little ridiculous. So I had to get rid of some of that look. And it was work, boy, it was work. There's no way I can get for this the time I've invested in it. But uh, I'm going to give her a deal because um, this is going to be advertising for me, for one thing, you know. Because uh, it'll be hanging there in the main room and then somebody say, oh, I like that and blah, blah, blah. 
and she can say, what's this girl that runs the booth here? And I can go look at my booth. And although it, <laughs> it's a small town, it ain't going to get a lot of traffic. I ain't going to make a lot at that place, but you know, it's a start. And I hope to always have one there, even if I open another one or something. But I've been thinking about putting some of these on here, you know, different patterns. I'm not sure yet. I just made these goofing around. Because I'd thought about, what did I think about? They're kind of big, so they kind of have to overlap the other side. And being five sides, it's kind of hard to uh, work out a pattern. So I'm going to put these back in the bag. I don't want them drying out. Okay, and let me show you something I kept fooling with. If I can find it. Um, okay. I got these at the thrift store a little while back. And they were the shower curtain rings that had the... Let me take it out of this. I got the plastic in there wrong. Be sure to pull it out easy. But you know it had the little metal thing with the loop to go over your curtain rod. And I wanted them on here, but they stick out like crazy. So I'm like, okay, I got to decide a way to fill in behind them. So, oh, this was my first idea. I took the... That. And I thought, well, that'll work. You know, and there's where the little arms of the chandelier are. But you stick it on there, you got the same problem because it sticks out. And so then I thought, well, I'll do this. Which I had the idea right, but I messed it up because I forgot what I was thinking. You know, I just, uh, like made a blob and shoved it in there and then I kind of rolled it down this. But the same problem, <laughs> it sticks up. And I'm like, what am I doing wrong? So... I got this half teaspoon measuring spoon. No, wait a minute. No, I use the table. I don't know. I think it's tablespoon. <clears throat> and I made it level, and I took it out. And while it's still shaped like a tablespoon, I shoved this down in it. No, while it's still shaped like a tablespoon, I put it here. See, I've already forgot. And then I pressed it down. So now it goes all the way to the chandelier on the ends fill in that gap and then i lifted it up and i kind of rolled it down this edge it ain't gotta be perfect because it's supposed to look old thank goodness <laughs> that's why i like a lot of my i like the old look regardless but it comes in handy when you don't have to be perfect you know so i'm gonna put these between each arm well i'll have to paint it and then put it there and I don't know if I should go in and try to darken some of these areas. I'm afraid. I'll put a clear coat on it. And maybe if I mess up, I can get it off. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, so I'm going to be making these and gluing them on wood glue. And then the little swirly things somewhere. I need something on this big old thing. I may put some of the bigger swirlies there and the littler ones here. I don't know yet. But I was wanting to share what I've done so far. Let me see. And with this chalk paint, with the spray paint, I should have sanded it some and I didn't. And every time the chain would bang it, it would leave a, a brass spot. It would ding it. And if I'd sanded it, it might not would. I don't know. And so when I finally realized, you know, I got that crackly look on the bottom that I didn't ask for and decided to use this paint, well, this one in ivory, uh, I'm like, well, it won't ding like that, and it don't. That's tough paint, and it's tough when you're trying to distress it. <laughs> this is one of those scotch pads, and I, I was pressing down with it, but I had to be careful once that dark showed. I could scrub it right off of that even. So, uh, yeah, the spray paint base, if you're going to use the jar paint, use it for your base because that spray paint, it just rub, rub off too quickly. And I had went back and touched it up with a dark paint, but I didn't like the way it looked, so I just went back over those places, wherever they were with the ivory. And so you can see some of the distress marks. 
There's a big one in the middle. And on there, okay. And I didn't want it uniform like, you know, every one of these having the same. So I just done it different. And down here there's not much. And you can kind of see the crackle I didn't ask for. <laughs> I don't know why it done that. It done that with the pink one. That's in my shop. And, uh, you know, I had to spray paint on and put the clear coat. And it just puckered on that ball part. Nowhere else. And on my pink one, I know it did on the ball part. And it might have somewhere else. But I thought with the pink one that it was the sunlight had it too hot. But this one wasn't in sunlight. I ain't been sunlighting. I don't know how long. <laughs> uh, this one I actually had on the back porch on a big piece of cardboard because of the rainy weather. So I, I know it wasn't from heat from the sun. So I just don't know. But anyway, that's what I'll be doing. Okay, hopefully this thing will stay focused. Ugh. Well, what the secret is. I figured I'd show you this. Okay, this is the, uh, the tablespoon. Just in case you ever find any pretty shower things and you want to make a little kind of frame them in on something. And this one, I thought they were so beautiful. It's a little different than that one. That one's got like the yellow rose there and that one's got the little bud. And since this is five sides, there'll be two of them that are like together, but that'll be all right. That'll be all right. Okay, so I'm taking my little blob. I'm not sure which way I turned it, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I think I had to round port toward the uh, chandelier. And so I really need this on video to help me remember. So I'm gonna put it on the chandelier get it you know centered on there the best I can it's old so it don't have to be perfect right <laughs> and then I'm gonna squish I'm gonna squish some more and I'm gonna squish them pretty good Okay, now I'm going to take it off. Ugh, boy, I liked it there. That blob stuck. I'll put it back. Oh, I pushed too hard. It pretty much went through, but that'll be all right. Okay. <clears throat> I think I'm a little too zoomed in. <laughs> now I'm going to take... I can tell where I grabbed it. No, that's where those things are. Okay. So now I'm going to take it and this front edge I'm going to have going right along this. Because I ain't worried about this back side of the pearl. I want the front side to print in. And I'll show you any that gets pushed forward I can peel off pretty easy. So let's see. So I'm pressing in pretty good. And I know I'm misshaping it. But I'll worry about that in a minute. And then I just line it back up when I need to start over. Uh oh, I got a little carried away. And if you mess up, you know, just squish it around and start again. No biggie. And so I'll probably redo this little area. But all this extra. I'm gonna take that off. And these little pieces. But let's squish that on there again. And now, since I've been manhandling it, I'm gonna put it back. I think I had it a little crooked. I'm going to say it might still be a little crooked. I'm going to squish it again. Gently this time since I'm all the way through. There's more of that loose. And I'd left that other one just laying on it overnight to kind of dry. But, uh, 
You know what I should have done? I forgot about this part too. Take this out. Because you don't want to get this trapped in there and it, it be hardened. Where the hole was, it leaves that little nub. I'm going to take that nub out just in case. <laughs> I don't line it up too good, you know what I mean? Then I'd have a, a nub in the way. So I'm going to put this uh, plastic right here. And then I'm going to put it back. Press it a little bit again. Just to be sure. And see, I got a little bit of gap. Well, I know it all. It still covers. It's not leaving air exposed. It's just leaving a little bit of the top of this. That's fine. I just didn't want like a big gap. And so I can leave that in it and let it dry some and then take it out where it'll completely dry, you know. So I'll just lay it over here with that one. So, I got, let's see, I got two made. So I got three more of those to go. Okay. Ignore the green fish tank. I had to put some medicine in it and the medicine's green. <laughs> but anyway, although it does have a lot of orange algae in it. I was working on these and uh, this thing don't want to focus, I guess, because the arms are sticking out here. And I'm not crazy about those because they're just random and in odd places, but oh well. And I also, I love the way that turned out. It's kind of homemade looking, I guess you say, <laughs> uneven don't look manufactured but it looks so good and I sprayed the clear over everything it's the uh, triple thick clear I'll try to remember to put in the description uh, what brand it is because I don't remember and uh, so that filled it in back there now right here that was supposed to crackle and right there, I don't know what happened, but so it just looks kind of like a rough paint job, which be all right, because I want it to look old. And I added a little bit of that, you know, that junk I keep in that Powerade bottle, <laughs> glaze with a, you know, slightly brown tint. I put some it on it, and then wiped a lot of it off. And oh, on the bottom, <coughs> I put a couple of these. This is from that mold. I got it at Walmart years ago, but it was in the cake decorating section. And it kind of looks like it needs something in there, but I figured that would distract from that. And it'll have a crystal. She says she's fine with acrylic crystals, and I have them on hand, so that's, that's what I'm going to put on it. And I'm probably going to put a little bit of pearls in places, too. And then she can just, if she don't like the pearls on it, she can take them off. But I, I showed her what I got so far, and she liked it. And uh, that's off that same mold, that little square shape. But uh, yeah, I love it so far. <laughs> Think about doing me one. I've got a few more of these. <laughs> Might make me one like this if it had to be teeny weeny. And then right here, I'm not going to use the plates that I put a hole in because uh, they just don't look right on it. Oh, come on, focus. But. Um, so this comes off and this <clears throat> and I think what she's wanting to do is I told her they they have remote control candles you know that you put batteries in but she may just have to order them herself because she's like yeah that's a good idea like but she'll probably have to order them I don't know but these will screw down some but to set a candle there and that'll go in further I just got some paint in there or something probably I'm thinking about, I'll have to get a nut to put on this and tighten it down where these don't wobble. And then I may just like fill it up with uh, resin or, or maybe a big metal washer glued down there. But then I'd have to paint that. So I don't know. I'll do something to level it off better. But anyway... That's what I got so far. I may go ahead and upload this. I don't know. It's taken me a while to do this. And I'm not getting any videos put up. 
you know, I ain't been working on this the whole time. I've had other things to do around here, but I haven't been doing what I should be doing, really. But trying to go through a little of my clutter, but that's slow go. <laughs> Especially with me. I'm so unorganized and kind of lazy, I must admit. But anyway, now this side, it looks a little older than uh, the one I just showed you. And, uh, you know, a little bit less of the dark was wiped off. And then uh, right in here, that was on that same, I think it was on that same mold. Uh, I made that to go on it. And that spot, that spot, and that spot. And so, over here, see how old that looks? That's how I wanted the whole thing look that old. And, and all that kind of crackle look there, I just love that. And uh, I wish I'd have got more crackle look in other places, but I didn't. But it'll be all right. <laughs> and all these look like different because they're handmade, you know. So, oh well. So it just adds to the charm. But anyway, that's what I got.